Little Wise Wolf by Gies van der Hamen and Hanke Semensma. Far away, on the other side of the mountains, there lived a little wolf. He read big books. He discovered new stars. He knew every herb. He knew everything. Because he knew so much, almost everyone called him Little Wise Wolf, and that made him feel rather proud. The animals who lived nearby often went to see him with difficult questions. Little Wise Wolf, called the bear. What do butterflies eat? Little Wise Wolf, where does the rain come from? asked the goat. Little Wise Wolf, how many stars are in the sky? barked the badger. Wise Wolf, I can't read, squeaked a small rabbit. Will you help me? But Little Wise Wolf did not want to be disturbed. He still had so many big books to read so that he would become even wiser. I don't have time for questions, he muttered. His door remained closed. One day he heard a tapping at his window. A big black bird flew into his house. It was the king's crow with a note around his neck. Dear wise wolf, I am very ill. Only you can make me better. Please help. Yours, the king. No time, shouted little wise wolf. There's a plant I need to research and a big book to finish reading. And I think I've just found a new star. I'm really rather busy right now. When the king calls, you have to come said the crow. Little Wise Wolf thought long and hard, as he liked to do. Then he packed everything he needed. The next morning he set off. Little Wise Wolf, said the mouse, where are you going? I'm off to see the king. I don't have time for your questions, he growled. Then he cycled away. I've heard the king is ill, said the badger, and only the wolf can make him better. Hmm said the bear, but it's such a long way to the castle. Do you think he needs our help? The road was very long. Little Wise Wolf pedaled and pedaled and pedaled. The road went up and the road went down. Little Wise Wolf walked and walked and walked. The mountains rose higher and higher. Little Wise Wolf climbed and climbed and climbed. He's going so slowly, whispered the goat. Do you think he needs our help? Well, we're really rather busy right now, said the rabbits. Around midday, it started to rain. Big drops fell from the sky. That little wolf is getting soaked, said the frog. Do you think he needs our help? Evening fell, and it grew dark. Little Wise Wolf was tired of walking. I'm cold, my stomach's grumbling, my feet hurt, and I'm lost. Maybe I'm not as wise as everyone says. I think someone else will have to make the king better. Then, in the distance, he saw a light. And there, deep in the forest, Little Wise Wolf found a tent and a pot of soup simmering on a campfire. He had no idea where they came from, but he had a lovely night's sleep. Wake up, Little Wise Wolf, shouted the bear the next morning. You have to go and see the king. Little Wise Wolf was very surprised. Did you all come here to help me? He asked. Of course we did, cried the animals. They took him to the edge of the forest. Aren't you coming with me? Asked the little wise wolf. No, you can do it alone from here, said the bear. But the city was big and little wise wolf was soon completely lost again. Can anyone tell me how to get to the castle? He asked quietly. 
A friendly cat showed him the way. Finally, Little Wise Wolf arrived at the castle gates, but then he couldn't go any farther. I don't think I can do it. Someone else will have to make the king better, he said once again. But the crow pushed him inside. Go on, the king is waiting for you. Hello, wise wolf, said the king weakly. Thank you for coming. I, I, I'm not as wise as everyone says, stuttered the little wolf, but the king wouldn't listen. Make me better right away, he said. I don't have time to be ill. So little wise wolf made some medicine. It was from an herb that only he knew because it was in a book that only he had read. The king swallowed a spoonful and before long, he was back on his feet again. Please, begged the king, stay here and be my royal doctor. I'll give you the tower room so you can look at the stars. No one will disturb you. You can read big books all day long. But for once, Little Wise Wolf did not have to think long and hard. I need to go back to my friends on the other side of the mountains, he said. I still have a lot to learn from them. Now, Little Wise Wolf is never too busy when the other animals come to see him. No one knows how, but he reads just as many big books as before, and he discovers just as many plants and stars. Maybe even more. Thank you for reading with me. Now we have a craft. We're going to be making some constellation art. For this craft, you're going to need some black paper, some white paint, water, a paintbrush, and colored pencils. It's also a good idea to lay out some newspaper or paper towels underneath all this because it can get pretty messy. In my cup here, I have a little bit of white paint mixed with a few drops of water. I'm going to dip my paintbrush into it. If you don't have a paintbrush, an old toothbrush actually works even better. Now I'm bending the bristles back with my finger, and when I release it, the paint splatters onto the paper and looks like stars. Cover your paper until it looks like a sky full of stars. If it's hard to make the paint splatter, try using a stiffer brush or adding a little bit more water to the paint. Now set it aside to dry. Once it's dry, you can draw some constellations. Take your white pencil and connect some stars. You can do this randomly, or maybe you have a specific shape in mind. I think I'll make a bird constellation. You can show your constellation just as connected stars, or you can draw the outline of the shape around it in the same or a different color. Don't forget to name it and add other constellations to the sky too. Thank you for joining me for story time. I hope you had fun. We'd love to see what you made. To find out how to share, look in the description. I'll see you next week. Bye!